What's up, YouTube? Officially back from the track. We're about uh, five days after the track. The car is still in track mode. It's not the problem. The track heads have been screaming at me everywhere I go. I look like a fool. I look like something's wrong with my car. Don't get the good looks, you know? You want the good looks for how good the car is, but I'm just getting all these looks like, what the f is going on? So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna hopefully go out and uh, clean off the rotors a little bit using the brake pads. I'll show you guys how to do that. For now, just sticking with swapping the pads on the same rotors. So we're gonna do that. And then once we do that, we'll probably give the car a good wash. The car's filthy, especially the wheels. These track pads definitely, I'm running the Carbotech XP10 pads, front and rear, um, and with just the stock rotors, um, but they definitely kick up a lot more brake dust. Since you're braking harder on the track, obviously there's more brake dust there that's gonna be generated. So the wheel's definitely dirty, the whole car is dirty. Uh, it was relatively clean going in the track, but uh, since I took it there and now we're about five days after the track, um, the car's still gotten dirtier. And I've got cars and coffee tomorrow. We're gonna put the stock pads back on after we take the Carbotex off. Um, mine only have a little bit of life left in them, so I'll probably be looking for a street pad, uh, just like kind of a stock replacement sometime here soon. For the most part, held up. If you guys saw my last video of my track day, took some getting used to, obviously, a little bit different. Great choice overall, I was happy with them. Um, got some more track days in the future, so we'll see how they hold up. That's all we're gonna do today. So what we'll do now, I'll take you guys on a ride in the car, I'll explain a little bit about the process of uh, kind of stripping the rotors using the track pads um, and how we're gonna do that to get the rest of this uh, material, transfer material that came off the Carbotech pads. Roll everything up here. Finally had a nice day in uh, Indianapolis for once. And so I'm taking advantage of it, uh, getting in the garage and doing some stuff. I'm gonna take you through kind of the de-bedding process, I guess you, could, guess you could call it here. And this is, guys, by no means, Am I a professional? By no means have I done this a ton of times before, but this is what I've read quite a bit about online. It's a good way to go if you can't afford two sets of rotors or maybe you're just kind of getting into this and you want to be able to have a more track dedicated brake setup, um, but you aren't sure if you want to go with a full pad and rotor setup. So we'll see how this works. This is my first time doing it. So I'll let you guys know, kind of and talk you through how this whole experience goes. De-bedding, I guess you could call it, process is gonna be kind of similar to the bedding process, but rather than getting the brakes hot and trying to transfer some of the pad material onto the brake rotor, what we're gonna do is do some harder stops, but keep the brad, uh, brakes keep the brakes cooler. So that way the pad stays very abrasive and we're gonna use the abrasiveness of the track pad because it's more abrasive a uh, harder pad compound um, and we're going to use that to basically strip the rotor of the transfer material that has been put on there. Now I've been driving around on these pads for a few days so I think that's uh, some of that's already being been done um, just because I've been driving on the street and with street driving you're really not getting your pads very hot and so most of the stops I've been doing are stops with the not heated up or not warm brake pads so they're still very abrasive so I think I've already stripped some of the material but I want to go out and do a couple purposeful hard stops um, to really get that last bit of material off so hopefully we have no problems transitioning to the uh, sh back to the street pad. You guys will probably hear my brakes squealing quite a bit and that is because A these brakes squeal pretty bad when they are now to temp these pads but B that's because I've already stripped some of that material off, so um, you hear more of that pad against the bare uh, rotor face. Go and safely do this because you are going to be making stops from 60 miles an hour down, 50, 60 miles an hour down to about 5 miles an hour. So most people that saw you doing it on the street probably are going to think, what the hell is this guy doing? He's, he's crazy. Somewhere close by uh, my house where I can do this safely. Again, I emphasize do this safely because you're going to be stopping pretty suddenly and doing some harder stops. Um, so this isn't something you necessarily want to do where there's going to be a ton of cars around. So Carbotech recommends uh, that if you do use their pads that you totally get the rotors resurfaced um, or you use them with a set of brand new rotors. Now like I said, not everybody can afford new rotors, not everybody can wants to you know go all in with a big brakes or uh, upgraded brake setup or a second set of completely second set of brakes um, so that's kind of what I did and you know track pads as as they 
sit are not totally cheap. And so I can understand where people come from where they want to maybe try it out. Um, and I was kind of in the boat where, you know, I wasn't ready to spend that amount of money. I wanted to see how this went because I read about this online. Um, and thought it could be a way where I could start out and maybe save myself some money. You could get your rotors resurfaced, but again, that's another additional cost. Um, on top of the pads, the fluid, whatever. Um, and so I just wanted to try this out, see how it went, um, and maybe this could be a solution. I would love to have two different sets of pads and rotors, um, but here we are. you guys will be able to see this here but that looks like a pretty fresh rotor most of the uh, material that had transferred onto it is now gone I think this will be okay so we're gonna wash the car and then we're gonna go from there going here. I've got this little ratcheting brake pad expander tool. Um, I actually haven't used this. I got it last time because it's having troubles uh, with one of the pistons seizing up on or a couple of the pistons seizing up on me in the front uh, right when I was changing from the stock pads to the track pads. So I got this but never really got to use it properly. So we'll see if it works today. I said we're only going to do the pads. So we're not going to do brake fluid. I did swap the brake fluid um, when I put the pads on the car, um, but I haven't totally decided uh, if I'm or when I'm going to switch the fluid. I'm going to run with it for now. Maybe I'll bleed them again before my next track day, um, get some fresh fluid in there, but the brakes feel fine. I'm not going to be doing any crazy driving on the street um, or any super hard braking really. So I'm going to leave the fluid for now, which should hopefully make this a quicker process. All right, so now that we've got the car up and the wheel off, uh, we've got our caliper exposed here. So what we're gonna have to do first is pop off these two little clips, and then we're gonna tap out these pins, and that's where we're gonna use uh, one of these Allen wrenches. Uh, probably, I think I was using the third from the smallest, which is a uh, 1 8 Allen wrench. Um, pretty much just something to, <laughs> something to uh, tap through the hole here hook these pins out, get the bracket off, and expose our uh, brake pads. So I'll just use a small flathead screwdriver uh, to pop the clips out. All right, so, got our two clips here. Focus, focus. Got our two little clips. 
Uh, as you can see from what just happened there, be careful when you're popping them out. I just was kind of reckless and flung it across the garage. Thankfully, I found it pretty easily. I usually set them by my lug nuts, so I always know where they are. But basically, now we're just gonna go ahead and tap these guys out. Pins aren't filthy. Um, I clean them, like I said, I cleaned them off when uh, I put the other pads on, but I might just give them another spray brake cleaner again, uh, just to, just for for the heck of it. We're gonna try out my little tool here. Um, make sure we have it expanding. This can ratchet two ways. So pads just slides right out. You know, pads look like maybe I didn't got pretty good use out of them but I mean they're not terribly worn down from where I got them for uh, doing one track event I mean I don't really know what to expect like I said this is my first time swapping pads like this but they still got a pretty good amount of life in them I'd say definitely two more track events or more um, but yeah that's pretty awesome so uh, brackets back on and through so here's one of those pins um, just gonna give it a quick spritz brake cleaner and rub it around a little bit. So now we're gonna put our pins back in here. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure of is these pins have a little hole. You wanna make sure that hole is facing out towards you um, because you're gonna wanna put that little, those two little clips back in. Uh, so if this is hiding, you're obviously not gonna be able to put those clips back in. You're gonna have a really hard time putting those clips back in. you need to just rotate those pins around to face you before you get it finally seated. So you'll know it's finally seated when you can when you can see the little hole facing you and there's this little nubbin sticking out here. Nubbin is an official term in case you were wondering. Nubbin. The nubbin and the hole. So now we're going to put the two clips back in and then uh, we'll be good to go. All right, and now we're good to go. Got our two pins back in, two clips back in, brackets back in holding the uh, pads into the caliper. Uh, so we're good to go. Now I showed you guys the front, uh, I'll move on to the rear. The rear is pretty similar, um, it's just a smaller caliper. Um, but it's still got the two pins, similar process. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do the other sides, take the car back out, uh, take it for a ride and see how everything's functioning. Um, hopefully, if I did the de-bedding process and then uh, bed these back in properly, they should go straight back to where we were at uh, with the sock pads. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, then that uh, shows you guys that this is obviously an option. On the uh, passenger side of the car now, and so I can't expose this quite as much for you guys, but it's very similar to the front, um, but basically there's just a different bracket. you still got your two pins and your two clips back here. This tool is awesome. Uh, you guys should definitely check it out. I'll try and power build. Uh, I'm sure there's other companies that make them, um, but they have different plates if you have uh, bigger uh, calipers, things like that. Um, but this is super nice. I Way better than digging in there with a the screwdriver and uh, you know, with screwdriver you can nick up your pads and things like that. But this just, uh, I think this is, this is way easier. Again, first time I've used it, and much easier. All right. So now that we've done one of the fronts and one of the rears. I don't think I need to show you guys uh, kind of step by step how to do the other ones. Um, so I'm probably going to do those quick uh, and then I'll jump back with you guys when we're getting in the car and uh, seeing how these feel and see if we do that, see if I did everything correctly. As far as I know, I've done everything correctly, but this is all an experiment for me, first time. But hey, I'm out here doing it, learning something. 
That's what's important. So, important if you know how to work on your car. Save you money, save you some time. Well, I don't know. I don't know about time. Definitely lost a lot of time with some car projects. But yeah, it can save you some money. There's one thing I forgot that is probably my favorite part about this car that I haven't had on for a long time. The roof rack. Gotta get the roof rack back on here now that the weather's getting nicer. Uh, time to get the bikes out, get the mountain bikes out, uh, and have some fun. So I'm gonna throw the roof rack on here and show you guys what I did to make my life a little bit easier coming back to put the rack on. So basically what I've done here is before taking the rack off, I went ahead and I took two pieces of blue painters tape on each corner. Actually, let me take the camera off here. You can see two here and two here, and then there's two matching ones on the other side. Uh, the reason I did that was because these clips come and hook around the door frame right here. Um, and what you have to do is you have to have them a certain distance apart in order for the different things to work, in order for it to function properly, all that good stuff. And so, rather than having to come back and measure and measure and keep moving and get fine-tune it again, I just marked it, and so that way I can hopefully just throw it back on, tighten it, and we'll call it a day. I know there's a lot of people out there who wonder what these roof racks will do to your car or do to your paint. Um, I really haven't noticed. I mean, there's here, there's like three little fade marks that you can barely see, um, and I haven't clayed the car or anything since I've taken the rack off. So I really don't think that there's anything that you need to worry about as far as the um, it ruining your paint or anything. And I can't wait to get it back on the car. Get this thing back in action. It's uh, sitting with a flat right now, so that's sad. Womp womp. Gotta do some maintenance on this thing too. Gotta do a chain and whatnot. That'll be uh, maybe soon to come. There's gotta be some of you mountain bikers out there uh, in this community that would be also watching this video. You know, I told you this channel's gonna be all about doing different outdoor things, so that'll be one of them. So I will do a little first person view for this last... Okay, we got brakes. We're good. Oh yeah, we got some brakes. God just looked at me with the GoPro on my head real weird. Brakes are working pretty well. So far my consensus is this works, which is awesome. Give her a good rip here. Give her a good rip ski. Brakes feel pretty good. Well, the car is officially back to street mode. It's back on, just looking just lovely. Something about the roof rack that, I don't know, I, the car just doesn't look the same without it. I honestly think I prefer it with the roof rack than without. Just gives it a more, Subaru look, I don't know. If I'm gonna get start, get start to get a lot more use now that we're getting these nicer days and uh, I could be outside and you know, have this channel be outdoor. Glad the car is back looking like this again. I, I can't tell you how much I miss that roof rack and that roof rack means it's time to get the bikes out. So, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a like, you know, throw a comment uh, if you got anything to say. Like I said, I'm no expert guys. If I'm doing something wrong, please tell me. Hope you come back for some more. I've got some more stuff planned, so uh, stay tuned. Have a good one.